Hey guys, we're back with another yeah, trip recap. This is from that out. same Joe Charter, but we're gonna go over some daytime fishing. Yeah, part two of this trip. It was so good we couldn't fit it all into one video. So here we go with a nice daytime fish coming up and over the rail. Uh, 100 pound grades and close to that here. Now, is this more like sinker rig fishing or was it all fly line? Uh, this was almost all fly line fish. We were seeing fish boiling up at the surface um, and it was, it was different. U.S. waters, uh, mixed grade. We had bluefin and yellowfin in the schools. Uh, we even had one school that was almost nothing but yellowfin in U.S. waters that we were able to catch like 60 fish off of for one stop. So that was really cool. Nice. And I feel like, too, with uh, this heavier line, it's been really nice having some bigger sardines. The bait has just been really killer as far as uh, mussel goes. Yeah, this was a three-day trip, and uh, these three-day trips, you actually get long-range cured-out bait from the bait receivers. So that's another advantage to doing a three-day trip, um, you know, the long-range cured bait. And you get your maximum bag limit. Uh, no matter if you're on a three-day or a 16-day trip, and anglers only allow three days limits. So uh, the three-day really is a, a sweet trip, in my opinion. And going over cured bait a little bit, it's uh, some of that stronger stuff that's able to last. It hasn't died out, obviously, um, and so that's the benefit to cured bait. Yeah, that can be something that's really important during the summer when the water gets warm. Um, the bait receivers, San Diego bait receiver has the best bait receiver in the entire world, in my opinion, for live bait. Uh, but when the water warms up, the bait has a hard time curing out and it, it just has less oxygen in the water. and uh, from the time it gets to the bait boat and sits in the receiver and then into the boat's bait tank, you know, it can struggle sometimes when you don't have that cured out long range bait. And then even then the uh, next level is the bait being in the bait wells, right? It's like, don't be afraid to ask for a little bit more bait if you don't see an absolute winner in there. You know, this is their guys' jobs. This is what we're here to do, right? Is the best bait possible is gonna give you the best bite possible. And that's what these anglers were doing right here on this, uh, this fly line bite. Um, we told guys, choose the best bait in the tank. If it looks like there's nothing but slow swimmers in the hand wells, throw them in the chum line where you see the deck hand was throwing the baits and ask for more bait in there. Always ask politely, of course. And uh, these guys were getting bit on these hot swimmers. Now, was this kind of a pretty quick bite? You know, were you only in the water maybe for like a minute with your bait before you got bit? Or was it more of the long soak? This particular part right here was that yellowfin bite that we were seeing. And it was pretty instant. Um, I was casting out baits and they were almost catching them out of the water it felt like sometimes where it was just fish on right away. Yeah, it's super important, you know, just to really read the situation and also listen to what the crew is saying. You know, if it's a super hot bite like that, they will tell you, hey, if you're not bit already, get a new bait, throw it back in the water, it should be instant. And they're not just telling you that just because they're just trying to help you out. And those are the guys that could cast a bait. Uh, they were getting bit easy. If you couldn't cast a bait, it was a little bit more of a long soak, but they were still getting bit. Uh, myself, I was just nose hooking these sardines and casting right in the chum line, uh, getting it away from the boat, and it was biting pretty good on that if you got uh, far enough off the corner. So with these bigger models, what was the key for tackle? What was line size, what was hook size? Uh, 25 to 30 pound test seemed to be the sweet spot for us in size two to size four circle hooks. Um, <laughs> Yellowfin and bluefin as it goes, these weren't exactly small, you know, anywhere from 15 up to 40 pounds in this stop seemed to be uh, the major size. We did have a couple that were over 100 that we hooked in the stop that were uh, challenging. You see, we got a kid here. Is this his first, uh, I mean, he's winding pretty good. I was going to say if it's his first bluefin trip, but. <laughs> uh, this was his first tuna trip. He caught his first bluefin and first yellowfin. He uh, even hooked his first bluefin and landed it all on his own on a Colt Sniper, which was pretty freaking cool. Nice. Yeah. A lot of people haven't ever done that. Yeah. You can see Skeeter here. He's helping him. I believe this is a yellowfin right here that, uh, that he hooked fly line. And he's doing a good job keeping pressure on the fish. They're working together as a team to get that boat or that fish into the boat. So what's kind of the story with yellowfin right now? Are we seeing more of it? Uh, there's definitely more coming up right now. Uh, most of it's in Mexican waters wanting. that we're seeing. Do this trip, we were in U.S. waters, though, so we got a school that had moved up early and was ready to bite. Um, as far as I know, it was one of the better, if not best, biting yellowfin schools we've seen up in U.S. waters so far. Nice. I mean, yeah, you can see Skeeter here on another fish. Um, seems like it was just a pretty fun day of fishing. Still Skeeters. Absolutely. The guys that uh, <laughs> spent the time at the rail throwing baits out that knew what they were doing were, were getting bit quite easily and having a good day. Oh. 
Nice gaff there by Keegan, bringing it up over the rail, and looks like it's uh, kind of later on in the bite. Skeeter has a jacket on now. And this is one of my favorite right, fighting positions, especially for this daytime fish, is kind of having that leg and using your knee as that leverage. Um, specifically on the legend, I think that it's just a really strong position for fighting fish, especially bringing it up to gaff right here, right? when it's kind of in that up and down position. Well, yeah, you can see the weather today. It's flat, calm, grease weather. Absolutely beautiful. Um, not all days on the water are created equal. This is as nice as it gets. Uh, the added bonus is the fish biting. You can see everyone on the stern is bent right now. Um, earlier in the bite again, you can see people up the side bit on this yellow fin. Uh, they were working together, spacing out, um, and they weren't tangling. That was the, the main thing is people were working together over, under, following their lines. Nice blue fin coming over the rail there. And so, what are some key features to distinguish between bluefin and yellowfin? Because they're pretty similar and people get them mixed up pretty often. A lot of time at this uh, size in particular, people have a hard time telling them apart. Uh, the easiest way to tell them apart is the pectoral fin on the side of the fish. Um, if it easily reaches the eye, it's a yellow fin. If it's short of the eye, when you fold it up, it's You're a blue fin. Too? Uh, so that's the quickest, easiest way to distinguish the difference between the two. Um, once you fillet them, another difference right is the there, blue boss. fin's a little bit one, more one, of a, one, a dark one. meat, a little bit more red. Um, the yellow fin's a little bit more lighter. You can see this guy with a new technique. Job, I have Rona. not seen this one before, but he is in a sumo squat position on the step. I mean, he <laughs> he looked pretty solid there. Uh, if you're limber enough, yeah, you can uh, get away with that. I don't even know if I can do that. <laughs> And this guy's actually using a left-handed reel here. You do not see that very often, but very customized though. Yeah, that's something we're going to go over in a future video, I think, here is uh, left-handed reel options. We've had a few guys ask uh, what companies and what rod options they have if they're left-handed and want to use a left-handed reel. Yep, and you can see this guy's actually using a rail rod here for the daytime fishing. So what happened here? Uh, Tony hooked a big one on a Komodo level one, and he was on it for forever. And uh, he told us, you know, we're, we're not going to get it in. Can we try splicing it? Uh, we did, but we ended up Wait. breaking it off right at color on our live stream. Oh, bummer. <laughs> yeah, it was a heartbreaker for sure. Um, see a fish coming in this time instead of the heartbreak. There you go. And a bloody duck there. And, man, this water is so clear. I mean, perfect conditions. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful water, beautiful weather that day. You can see the fish of color super deep. Um, so people had plenty of time when they were yelling color before gaff. Yeah, and it's always good, you know, as long as the deckhands are patient, waiting for that fish to come all the way up, you'll be good.